Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to continue our look at Profile Manager and we're going to take uh, a little bit more detailed look at the Profile Manager interface. So the interface that you use uh, through your web browser to actually manage your devices. And so I want to kind of give you an overview of that so you get a good idea of what the interface looks like and the various things that you can set up uh, in a general sense. And then we're going to get into a little bit more detail on some of the specific things that you can set up in Profile Manager to push to your various devices uh, in order to configure them the way that you would like them to have them configured. So again, here we are in the Profile Manager interface. And so to get to uh, the Profile Manager uh, web interface, you could just click this link right here. Uh, I've already got it up and sized the way I want it. So let me just pull it up for you here. And so basically you get to this by uh, going to your um, actual web address um, with the backslash Profile Manager. Okay, and then the number sign, and then it'll tell you what page you're on. But if you just put Profile Manager, that'll get you in there. Uh, so anyway, so here we are uh, in Profile Manager, and you'll notice that we've got the typical Apple interface where you've got the uh, toolbar down the side here that changes the uh, content area over here. Uh, you can see we can do some searches and things. Uh, there's a couple of additions that have been added here in Profile Manager with Yosemite, and that's a specific uh, area for apps and one for books. Now what this allows you to do, and I'm just going to walk through kind of each of these for you, and then we're going to spend a little bit more time in some of the details here for users and groups, is this allows you to actually add um, applications that you may have either um, created yourself if you've got an enterprise where you've maybe created an app that let's say has your uh, you know your company's manual on it or maybe you've got an employee application that you use uh, you can actually add an enterprise app here or it also includes apps that you may have purchased through the volume purchasing program uh, which allows you to uh, basically pay one fee for different applications that you've got and then you can then add those applications to your devices and so you've got that option uh, here as well in fact, if I just click on Add Enterprise App, you'll see I'll get this drop down, which is going to ask me to actually load the application. I'm going to cancel that because it assumes I've got it on my machine. Or you can do the Volume Purchasing Program. And if I click on that, it's going to take me to Apple's Volume Purchase Program website where I can actually add something for education or for business here. Uh, and so that's how that works. So let me just go ahead and uh, put that down. Again, that would be if you've purchased applications through the, for the, through the VP, uh, VPP program there, Volume Purchase Program. Now we've got the same thing here for books. Uh, you can add an enterprise uh, iBook that maybe you've created. Again, that could, again, be a manual or something like that that you've got for your enterprise. And this will do the same thing. It'll take us to the finder and have us add it. Uh, or, again, maybe books that you've purchased through the volume purchasing program where you've bought a few iBooks and you want everybody in your enterprise to have that. Uh, through that volume purchasing program, those books could be added on here as well. Uh, since I don't have any of those, I really can't show you how that looks, uh, but that just kind of gives you an idea of the ability you have to actually add these things to your library, which then will allow you to add them to your devices. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. Uh, we have our devices area here, and uh, as I showed you before, I added a couple devices, and so we've got those in here, like a MacBook Pro and an iPhone, so those are where our devices will be shown. Uh, I'm going to cover that in a little bit more detail when I cover devices. Uh, we have our device groups here, where I can add a group for devices. Again, I'll cover that in a future screencast. And then we have our users here, so we've got our various users that we've got already set up, and then we've got our user uh, groups over here where we can manage users by putting them in different groups and you'll see I've got a work group here and I've got a kids group that I set up then down here we've got our activity and so these are basically the activities that have been pushed to my different applications I've got my active tasks here and you see I don't have any active tasks waiting uh, to happen this would be where maybe if I made a change and a user hasn't opened their device yet it'll say pending in here because it's waiting for the user to actually turn their device on before the uh, the push change will take effect and then I've got my completed tasks here and you can see I've got my uh, enrolled iPhone here and you can see it succeeded uh, in, in the in enrolling the device in profile manager and then the same thing for enrolling my uh, MacBook Pro and it says it succeeded as well so all of your completed tasks will show here so that'll allow you to see if the changes you made actually made it to your devices so that kind of gives you an overview a uh, very simple overview there of a profile manager interface uh, so now let's get into taking a look at managing this uh, information and so I'm gonna look at the groups area here uh, you can also look at the users area they will be very similar uh, but I want to walk you through these various tabs here so you get a feel for some of the over, overarching settings that you can set before we get into the specifics. So you'll notice here we've got uh, the general area where we've got our group name here, which is everyone, as you can see. 
Then we've got our restrictions that are laid out here. Now, this, this restrictions area gives you a little bit more uh, fine-tuned control over who can actually install profiles and what they can actually do with their device. So it allows you to kind of uh, customize these different settings so that it goes the way you want it to. And this is something that was new with Mavericks, uh, the Mavericks version of server. That would be server uh, 3. Uh, where before we couldn't uh, control whether users could add profiles or take them off or wipe devices. Uh, but then they added this restrictions area, which really helps those of us that are trying to manage these devices, especially if it's in our home or in our workplace, to be able to specify what users can actually do with their devices, uh, which will make our lives a lot easier. Again, if a user just removes uh, some of the stuff or maybe wipes their device when we don't want them to, it can cause us all kinds of problems. So these restrictions really help us out. So you can see here the very first one is whether or not to allow users to access the My Devices portal. And if you remember from the last screencast where we talked about the enrollment of iOS devices and the previous one for Mac devices, when you go to your server's name slash My Devices, it allows you to actually enroll devices in Profile Manager. And so if you don't want your users to do that, maybe you want to do that on your own, you can actually uncheck this button here. And once you do that, uh, then, you know, basically if I uncheck that, then all of a sudden now, uh, when I save it, that means that nobody's able to get to that portal in order to enroll their devices. I'm just going to hit revert there because I don't want to do that. Uh, I can also allow configuration profile downloads or not. Maybe I don't want uh, my users doing any of that stuff themselves. Maybe I want to do that on my own because I really want to manage the details. I can uncheck that and do it myself. I can uncheck the device enrollment or unenrollment. And this is would come in handy where I don't want users unenrolling their devices because I want to make sure that the certificates stay with the device. If I uncheck this here, that means that users cannot enroll their devices and they can't unenroll them either. So um, I, I, it'd be great if they had an extra button there that allowed for enrollment and then a separate one that allowed for unenrollment uh, because a lot of times we want them to enroll it by themselves because it saves us time, uh, but we don't want them to unenroll it. But unfortunately, right now, it's all in one setting here. So if you check this, you'd have to be the one that would uh, enroll the device yourself and, uh, and instead of allowing them to enroll the device through the My Devices area. So it would take an admin to do that. So... Uh, again, we got kind of half of what we want. Hopefully in the future, those will be two separate uh, settings in here. Uh, then you can basically say what they can do with their device. They can, you can allow them to allow device lock to happen, or if they log in too many times with the wrong password, it'll lock the device. So you can allow or not allow that. Allow the device passcode to be cleared uh, if you want to so that they have access to that or not. And then whether or not they can wipe the device or not. And sometimes if you've got kids, uh, you might want to uncheck this so they don't accidentally wipe their device, and then you've got to go restore it all. So that gives you an idea of how that part works there through the My Devices portal. Then we've got a couple of extra uh, settings here depending on how you actually set up your devices. Um, you can allow enrollment uh, during the Setup Assistant for devices that are configured using the Device Enrollment Program. Uh, the Device Enrollment Program is basically where maybe you've got a company or something and you've purchased iPads and you've, en you've enrolled them in your own Device Enrollment Program so that when they get their devices, they're already set up. The profiles and things are ready to go for your device there. Uh, you can say that you'll allow enrollment during that uh, setup assistant so it automatically enrolls in Profile Manager when you, when you uh, set up the device for the first time. Uh, you can also do the same if you're using Apple Configurator uh, to set up your devices. And let me just show you real quick here. Apple Configurator in the App Store uh, is a way for you to actually configure your devices in a little more detail. Uh, it's great for schools and things like that. If you wanted to, uh, if I just flick through here, you can see where I want to uh, basically set up multiple iPads and I want to you know, make sure they have certain things on them and they're set up a certain way. I can use the Apple Configurator to do that and choose what things I want on my various devices. And so this is what, what was used uh, frequently before Profile Manager uh, to set up our devices. It has a lot of the same Profile Manager settings and things in it, um, but it gives you it gives you a window where you can set these up. Uh, the advantage of this over other ones, you know, it's maybe a little easier to track these things ahead of time before you enroll them. Uh, but in a lot of cases, it, it can just be preference as well. So if you use Apple Configurator and you use this tool, you can actually say you'll allow enrollment by devices that are configured by this. Uh, again, which just allows those devices then to show up over here in the My Devices area. Uh, then finally, we've got restrict enrollment to placeholder devices. And a placeholder device is where I add a device ahead of time with the serial number and everything, and that device has a placeholder now in My Devices area so that when a user actually tries to enroll uh, in, the, in the program, 
it will um, then add that device once they finally enrolled and put the certificate on their computer. So it just gives me a placeholder there because I know the devices I want to enroll. And so you can say, hey, I, I only want devices that, ha that are, have placeholders to be enrolled in my profile manager, uh, ones that I've already set up over here ahead of time waiting for them to enroll, and I can make that a requirement. And then I can restrict enrollment to assigned devices as well if I want to go a little further with that. Uh, if you want more information, again, it does give you a little uh, help section here on restrictions, which breaks it down for you if you get stuck. Uh, but that kind of gives you an overview of this restrictions area. Uh, finally, down here, we've got uh, in groups with uh, restriction settings, apps, books, et cetera, enabled, you know, uh, what devices are in those groups. And we don't have any that are in those groups right now. It would list those devices right here uh, once we had them set up. But since we haven't done that yet, there's nothing here. So that's the about area. And that about area is true for all of these different device groups. It's also true for the users area as well. Now, if we look at the settings area, if I just uh, click on that, the settings area will give us the main profile for everyone that we had set up inside of our uh, profile manager. Uh, and if I just, let me just put this down for one second here. If we come into profile manager, uh, we have our default uh, configuration profile, this settings for everyone. And the settings for everyone uh, area here has all of the different uh, settings that we've got for users, right? The calendar and contacts and all of that. And if we download that profile, it will then configure all of those settings automatically for our users. And so if I put this back up, and this is where it shows the settings for everyone that's in here, I can actually download the profile to my desktop or I can actually edit it in here as well. And if I just uh, click on edit, it takes me into the actual payload for that particular particular uh, that particular certificate uh, but I'm going to show you that in more detail in our next screencast so let me just put that down uh, finally I can do enrollment settings in here I can uh, send allow activation lock command after the enrollment and that's if I've got a supervised device where I got a device that uh, I'm supervising that uh, has a little bit more detailed security on it and then I can also if I check this I can further say only send the command if the ac activation lock bypass code has been obtained and so that's if I add a bypass code to that uh, then I can send the uh, activation lock through that way. So, again, just a little bit more uh, de fine detail there in terms of my enrollment settings. And then the next tab, I've got my apps. So any apps that I've added through this apps area here uh, will show up here, the ones that I want to add. And what I can do is if I just click this little plus button here, I can choose apps that are in my library uh, that I want to have added over here to this profile so that users can add them to their devices. Again, since I don't have any apps enrolled in any of those programs, I don't have anything in here that's showing up, but I can select them and add them in here if I want to do that. Uh, so I'm just going to say cancel. Um, the other thing too is I'll show you with this gear icon here the things I, other things that I can do. If I just click on this, uh, I can lock my lock the lock a particular device, wipe it. I can uh, update the info, which will cause any certificates I've got to be pushed to that device. Uh, I can clear a device's passcode, clear a restrictions passcode, allow activation lock, clear activation lock, and then push any enterprise apps that I might have in here. Okay, so because I'm on the app screen, that that uh, setting shows up here. So I just wanted to show you we've got that down below. Uh, books is, operates the same way. Again, if I click the plus, then any books that I've got, I can select those and have those added to my device. And so that makes it really nice to be able to add any iBooks that I've got that I want to have just automatically show up on people's devices. I can add those in there. Uh, again, if I click this uh, gear uh, icon, you see I got the same kind of settings here. Uh, push enterprise apps. The books kind of fall in that same category. So if I undo that. And then finally, I've got activity. And so any activity for any profiles that I've pushed, you know, activities and tasks that show up here, that would show in here and show certificates that I've pushed. And since I haven't pushed any, they won't show up there. And again, I got the same settings down here if I need them. So that kind of gives you a tour of that interface. And if I were to go, uh, I could actually manage this interface for everyone or for my specific uh, group of uh, my kids group here. I can actually then set any kind of restrictions I want based on that particular group. Uh, I can do it by work group as well and have that set up. And you'll notice here when I get into this group area, it adds this members uh, button right here. And if I were to click on that, uh, once I assign different members, uh, and you can see it says members are not synced until the restriction settings, apps, and all of that are, si are assigned uh, or the support is enabled. And so I haven't done any of that yet, so they don't show there. Uh, but in my work group, I, let's see, let's go to my work group for a second. And the same thing's true here. I don't have those users assigned yet. So once I get those profiles going and some of those things are assigned, then my users will show up in this, in this screen here. Uh, one more thing I want to show you. If I go into the users screen, uh, you'll notice for particular users, I can actually set up uh, the same restrictions and settings right here. 
And uh, you can see it, it'll show me the groups that this particular user is in, and they're in the everyone group, all users group, and that's there. Uh, and then real quick, if I just click on the gear icon, you notice I got the same types of things here. All right, so those settings apply across all of my devices. And then finally over here, I can show any devices the user has. In fact, if I just go to myself here, you'll see there's my two devices that I've assigned to myself that shows up. So you can actually view the devices by the user as well to know which user's assigned uh, to what devices. If I were to click the plus button on here, I could actually add other devices to this user as well if I wanted to. All right, so let me just uh, unclick that. So that gives you an idea of the Profile Manager interface and some of the things that you can change and add and customize and tweak uh, within it. Uh, I wanted to give you that walkthrough so you can see some of the restrictions you can set up ahead of time before you actually add these different things to your users. Uh, in our next screencast, we'll talk more in more detail about how you actually modify and customize the settings for each user and each group. And we'll do the same thing for our devices and device groups. And that'll kind of round out how to use Profile Manager. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.